If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's cdebater at aol.com. Thank you. The points you brought up are many, and the answer to none of them is simple. So it's uh, uh, hard to pinpoint exactly where to begin. But I guess I'd like to say that as a person who, like I mentioned before, I'm, I'm a Jewish and Christian by blood. Uh, when I read the Gospels, and I read about Jesus' relationship with the Jews, uh, he loved the Jewish people so profoundly. Um, there was a woman who asked to be healed, and uh, he said to her, the dogs are not worthy to eat at the table with the children. She was not a Jew. She was not a, an Israelite. So uh, she, he said to her, the dogs are not worthy to eat at the table with the children. And she said, oh, I only want the crumbs that spill from the table. And he said, blessed are you. Uh, he said to his disciples, do not go unto Samaria, but stay um, to stay and speak to the Jews, speak to my, the chosen people, my people. So Jesus felt passionately about the Jews, and when they rejected him, he wept. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, would that you would have come to me. I would have gathered you as a hen gathers her brood, but you would not. Then he cursed Jerusalem, and he said, uh, Woe to those who will have, you know, bear children. Your children will die in your womb, and not one stone will be left upon another. So at a certain point, at a point in his ministry, he began to speak in terms of his crucifixion. Um, up until a point, he never did. And in the Old Testament, there's no mention of a second coming. Jesus came uh, with the intention of bringing the kingdom of heaven on earth. The very first words in his ministry, and also in John the Baptist's ministry, the emphasis was, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, so Jesus came, he said, I, I came to you know, ignite a fire in wood that it were already kindled. Uh, Jesus, this is a very interesting uh, theological question. I did attend seminary, and there was, it's such a point of controversy, uh, the urgency of Christ versus the uh, long uh, extent of the 2,000 years of Christian history. What was the meaning of, of the Sermon on the Mount, which we have not been able to realize? We cannot live. Jesus said, you must be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. So... Jesus came to establish the kingdom of heaven, to make the way open for us to become perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. The Jews rejected him, and he wept. He wept over them and said that they would be cursed. Uh, so uh, that's what happened. Seventy years after Jesus' crucifixion, Jerusalem was, was destroyed, was sacked, and the Jews have been a wandering people until 1948 when Israel was established. Uh, as a Jew, as a person of Jewish lineage, uh, I've wept many times in front of Jesus because my ancestors said, let your blood be upon our hands, be on our shoulders. Uh, this is not the way that one should treat the, the Lord that they've been weeping for. If you read uh, in the early chapters of Luke, the statements of Mary and of uh, Zechariah about the coming of the Lord with such expectation, Jesus will save Israel, they believed. But could he know? Instead, Israel was destroyed. You made a n number of points last time. Uh, let me take them in reverse order. Uh, on Elijah uh, and John the Baptist. Okay, John the Baptist, it said, came in the uh, role of Elijah, or as you, if you will, in the spirit and power of Elijah. Okay, Elijah did come in person and the transfiguration. Okay, but many people were confused about Christ's first coming and Christ's second coming. And I believe that Christ, Elijah himself will come before Christ's second coming also. Okay, but John the Baptist came in the role. While John the Baptist may have had moments of, of doubt, uh, he definitely led the people to Christ uh, because Jesus said that the people should have believed uh, in John the Baptist in Matthew 21, 32. Okay, on some of your other points, you said that Jesus had great love for the Jews, um, uh, which I completely agree with, and yet at the end they were... Uh, cursed and at 70 AD, you know, the, the city was destroyed. But sort of to close off this uh, part one, I just want to say that either the same Jesus is coming back or the same Jesus is not coming back. 
okay? And I would say that if it's not the same Jesus, it's not the same God. Okay, that's a key point to remember. You know, our bodies will be transformed to be like Jesus' glorious body, okay? Either that's true or Paul and everyone else was, was wrong. Okay, either Jesus saved us completely or else we need somebody else or something else to complete what Jesus either failed or was, was unable to complete. Okay, so the key point is that either he came back or he didn't. And a lot of things we didn't get to discuss, like how is he coming in the clouds or not, maybe more in Elijah, and hopefully we'll be able to do that in part two. But I guess I'd just like to say that um, it's not enough uh, to read the Bible and to know about Jesus and to know a bunch of, of, of doctrines, but you have to know Jesus personally. You have to invite him into your heart. And you have to really want to follow him and have a personal relationship with him. And so for the viewers out there, I hope you do not think of this as an academic kind of discussion, but this is something that people need to make a decision on about uh, do you follow Jesus? And if so, uh, which Jesus is it that you follow? And I hope that you consider that. Thank you. The bottom line is that uh, uh, there's a lot of things to go into in a very short time. And... Uh, about Jesus himself, the Bible said you could recognize him by seeing the fruits. But the bottom line, I, want to, I don't want to go in so much in uh, theology right now. Uh, I want to mention some project where Moon that he's working on. We had ministers come in a conference. We had a lot of non-ministry or whatever day in America. And we don't, uh, Ray Moon said, you shouldn't join Unification Church. He said, you should stay with your church. There's not a point in making out a church. There's enough churches already. The point is that we're working together. First John 2.18 says that there are many antichrists that have come. First John chapter 4 uh, says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone into the world. As you can see from the chart, there indeed have been many false prophets who've come into the world. This list is by no means exhaustive, but it's interesting just to see how many people have claimed to be either Christ come the second time, Christ come the first time, or like Lord Hakim, uh, just plain visible God. So how do we tell uh, if someone is Christ or not? Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verse 2 through 4, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promise you to one husband, to Christ, so that I might present you as a pure version to him. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. So, Paul is jealous that we would follow a different Jesus, or a different gospel, or a different Christ. And some of these people who are these um, false messiahs were almost kind of humorous. Like uh, Maharaji for the Divine Light Mission, he says he came in the clouds because he flew from India to America in an airplane. Many other people have come to uh, America uh, espousing Hinduism, or at least what they call Hinduism. A Hindu friend of mine even says that the reason they all come to America is because the people in India aren't so gullible. A personal co-worker, a friend of mine, a co-worker uh, in a previous job, he was basically let go of his job because he believed that he was Christ come again. And the scary thing about him is that he said a few things that were similar to what Reverend Moon said, and I'm almost certain that he had no uh, contact with Unification Church or Unification Theology. And this idea, I understand I'm not unique in having a friend like this. Uh, psychologists ha call what they have a messiah complex of people who have this. Please contact Christian Answers for free information on numerous subjects, important subjects, such as the biblical doctrine of the Godhead, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To see full-length videos on these and other subjects, go to Yahoo Video, type Larry Wessels into the search box, and click on the icon for iShoot Video 2.